<laughs> How about now? Can you guys hear okay? Just drop a comment if it's still on. Okay, good. You can hear me, Beth. Awesome. Stacy, hopefully you can hear me now. It should be on now. <laughs> My uh, software updated, so the buttons are moving around in different places. <laughs> so I just had to find the right one. Awesome, awesome. Hi, Melinda. I'm just getting my ice mold heated up, guys. So if you're going to follow along with this uh, play date today, you can go ahead and heat up your red and your clear ice mold. Um, if you are watch watching now and going to do it later, that's totally fine, too. Awesome, awesome. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Matthew. Hi, Beth. Yay, I'm so excited for today. How are you guys doing? You guys having a good day so far? Jesse and Riley's here. Fantastic. Okay, so we'll just give it another minute or two before we get started as I heat these up. We're going to probably use our red first, um, but you can pour either one that you would like. All right. Good. Hi, Patricia. Thank you, Tammy. Miss you. Awesome, awesome. Okay, you guys ready? We'll go ahead and get started here in a second. I just have my microwave set up right here behind me to make it easy. Um, is anybody going to be following along today? Or are you just watching to do it later? Awesome. Good afternoon. Yay. Cool, cool. Yeah, we are making our ornaments today, which I'm super excited about. These are going to be 2D hanging ornaments, so it's going to be really, really fun. Um, something really easy that you can make for the holidays. We're staying um, in my Christmas in July theme for this month, so uh, we're going to, I've been doing Christmas themes on my Cake Flix show and, um, you know, just for a whole bunch of different projects, because why should we, wait, should we wait all the way till December for Christmas? So we are doing some Christmas projects now. All right, so I'm all melted. Kathy, you're going to watch first. Awesome. Hi, Evelyn. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, guys. Okay, awesome. So uh, we will go ahead and get started here. Um, so thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm really, really excited about this play date. As I was saying, we are going to be doing our Christmas in July theme again today, um, since we still have a little bit of July left. So we are going to be doing some hanging isomalt ornaments. It's going to be really, really fun. Um, we are going to be doing two different types of ornaments today. We're going to be doing a uh, red ornament that's going to be impressioned and painted. And um, we're also going to be doing a, an ornament with a transfer for sheet and decorated with some really really pretty sprinkles and I'm going to show you how to make them into ornaments that actually hang up so um, I have my little wire hanger here in the back that I'm going to be using um, to hang them and uh, this I think I just got these on Amazon but you can find these uh, at a lot of different like home goods type stores as well uh, just a little nice lightweight hanger that we're going to use to hang up our ornaments so uh, we will go ahead and get started as always today we are using my Simi ice malt so Simi ice malt is pre-cooked and ready to use it is all going to be tempered so you don't have to worry about the temperatures or the recipes remember that ice malt is just sugar-free hard candy uh, ice malt is going to be a lot easier to work with than traditional boiled sugar if you haven't worked with it before um, you can do all the same techniques with the real sugar and with the ice malt, but it is going to be a lot easier with ice malt. And ice malt is going to work a lot better in high humidity as well. Here in Florida, it is very high humidity, just like it is in a lot of parts of the world. So uh, we want to make sure that our pieces are going to hold up really nicely and they are going to be nice and strong and not going to completely melt from humidity. So uh, we're going to be using ice malt today and that will just make it super, super easy for us. Um, like I said, this is already pre-tempered. If you have the crystals, the powdered ice malt, that's raw ice malt so make sure that you temper that my recipe is on my website so if anyone's interested in uh, learning more about cooking it from scratch you can go to my website to find the recipe and uh, I'm not going to be doing that in this demo just because it takes a long time it would be kind of boring so um, that's why I'm using the pre-cooked but if you have raw ice malt you have to temper it to the right temperatures it's kind of like tempering chocolate where you need to get it to the right temperatures in order for it to work properly so my li recipe is listed on my website for free if you're interested in that but I'm just going to use the pre-cooked because it makes it a whole bunch easier 
Um, so like I said, we're going to be doing two different types of ornaments today. Make sure that you are wearing your gloves. Remember that ice melt is about 300 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 150 degrees Celsius. So it is quite hot. Um, make sure that you don't stick your finger in it. I highly recommend wearing gloves when working with ice melt because it is quite hot. So a double layer of glove is best, a cotton glove first, and then a nitrile or latex glove over top of that is going to buffer the heat really well. Um, and don't follow my bad example because I'm not wearing gloves, um, just because I've been doing this for about 13 years. And my hands don't feel any heat anymore and it's easier for me to demonstrate for you guys without them but definitely wear your gloves don't be intimidated by ice melt it's the same thing as working with a stove or an oven which you work with all the time if you bake or cook um, it's even you know those are hotter than the ice melt is so as long as you're being cautious you're paying attention to what you're doing and you're wearing your gloves to protect your hands you won't have any problem uh, so yeah we will go ahead and get into it awesome awesome if you guys have any questions please feel free to write them in the chat and I will be happy to um, you know read through them uh, I'm going to be working. I have my iPad set up here, but I also have uh, my mom, Michelle, which is over here. She is going to be reading out questions to me uh, that are in the chat. So if you have any questions, she will be happy to read them and um, we will just go over them as we go. All right. So I'm going to flip the camera down so you guys can see what I am doing here. There we go. So here is my ice melt crystals. Like I said, I just melt this down. Now remember that you can get it pre-colored like this, or if you got our um, accessory kit that was with this play date, you will have the red ice melt and the clear ice melt. So the red ice melt is already pre-colored, obviously. But you can also, if what you have at home is just clear, you can use an edible airbrush color to achieve this finish. So this is going to be a liquid or uh, like a water or powdered based color, or sorry, water or alcohol based color for the clear transparent finish. You can also mix in powdered colors like luster dust and petal dust, but those remember are going to be a more opaque finish. You're not going to be able to see through them. So you can use either, but they're going to have different effects. Just remember to never ever mix in gel color into the ice melt because that will break down the ice melt. So liquid or powder is going to be best, but to get this nice clear color, we're using a liquid airbrush color. Um, I already have mine pre-colored, but remember you can do that. Remember you can also flavor this, so if you wanted to add a flavor into your ornaments, you can also mix in the uh, oil-based flavorings. I like oil-based because they're very, very concentrated and it's going to work better than like an emulsion that's not as concentrated, so you need more of it. And then that tends to kind of dilute the ice melt a lot if you have to add too much excess liquid into it. So oil-based is best because you only need a couple drops and you can make it any flavor that you want. Or of course you can make these more as keepsakes or just as decorations. So that is what we are using. Like I said, there's no temperatures, no recipes or anything. You just melt the ice melt in the microwave. So I have preheated my ice melt here. You can see that it is nice and melted. Um, now the key to getting crystal clear ice melt, as you can see, this is all completely crystal clear. There are some bubbles that are just stuck to the bowl down here, but they're not actually mixed in. Remember to do that, you want to make sure that you bring your ice melt to a boil in the microwave. So again, 30 to 15 to 30 second intervals in the microwave until it comes to a boil and it's nice and bubbly, that's great. Just make sure that you let it settle. So after it comes to a boil, that's awesome because all hot air will rise and it will rise and pop itself out. But if you pour it right away, you're just gonna pour bubbles into your piece. So I let my ice melt settle for about a minute or two or when Whenever it stops boiling, um, it should still be nice and liquid enough to pour, but it's going to stop actively boiling and bubbling. That's when you want to pour it. Okay, so that's how you get nice crystal clear ice melt. Remember, I also have a YouTube series uh, on my YouTube channel, which is just under my name, Sydney Galpern, and that will um, have all the basics. The first episode is all about different ways to keep bubbles out of the ice malt. I also never stir it, so if you have to stir your ice malts to mix in color or flavor, you always bring it back to a boil after that, even if you had already brought it to a boil, because you want to make sure that any air you mixed in gets boiled out. Um, so if the ice malt was already the color that I want, so I just had my red ice malt, all I'm going to do is melt this down and um, just let it do its thing in the microwave wave till it comes to a boil. It doesn't need that agitation like chocolate does to melt it down. So um, bring it to a boil and then let it settle. I am going to grab my uh, form here that we're going to be using. Okay, so I have my metal cookie cutter. So this is just a metal cookie cutter. This is the one that came in the accessory kit. Or of course you could use any metal cookie cutter that you have at home. And we're gonna be using this as a form to pour our ice melt into for our ornaments. So uh, what we're gonna do is pour this on a Teflon mat. This is a coated Teflon mat. Uh, it works with ice melt beautifully. You don't have to grease it or anything like that. You can also use aluminum foil if you don't have one of these mats, but make sure that you grease the aluminum foil with cooking spray. And you also wanna grease the uh, ornament cutter with cooking spray as well because metal will stick to ice melt if it's not greased. So I'm just going to grab a paper towel. Okay. So 
spray a little bit of cooking spray. It can be any type of cooking spray, canola oil, vegetable oil, olive oil. Just make sure that it's not the baking stuff that has that powder in it. All right. So I just sprayed it with a little bit of cooking spray. I don't need to do that to the Teflon, but remember if you're working on aluminum foil, you will need to do that. Um, but I wouldn't really pour on a silicone mat. You can, it would release fine, but sometimes it can bubble up from heat and get kind of wavy. So I like to use a thinner mat that the weight of the ice melt can press it down. So we're just going to pour the ice melt right into the cavity. So I'm going to take my liquid ice melt and just pour it in. I'm just going to pour enough to cover over the bottom. So we're just starting out with a really basic kind of one solid color piece. Okay, just like that. So there's not really a lot of cracks and crevices in this that I need to help it along with filling, but if there was, you can use a toothpick or a skewer to kind of push it into any of the crevices it didn't quite reach by itself. But um, there's enough, enough isomalt there that it just pushed itself into that little cap, and that will be perfect. Um, what I do like to do is just graze the surface with the chef's torch just to pop any bubbles along the top, and that will just let it sit. So that will be um, cool in probably about 10 to 15 minutes, because this isn't too big. Uh, you can rush it by putting a little battery-operated fan on it if you want to. Don't put your ice melt in the fridge or the freezer, though, because the moisture and the condensation can affect the ice melt and make it sticky. So um, I just leave it at room temperature. Remember that metal conducts heat. So this metal cutter, as soon as the ice melt touches it, is going to radiate that heat all through the metal, and it's going to be just as hot as the ice melt. So try not to touch it. Don't move it, even with the glow. Um, just in case you don't want it to be too hot. Uh, if you have to move it, you can move it by the mat here, but try and put it in a place that you won't really have to worry about it. And um, yeah, just go ahead and let that cool down before we start decorating it. Okay, so that is going to be super simple. You can imagine how many different things that you can make just with this technique by using different cutters. You can make plaques, you can make um, you know, letters if you wanted to, if you have like monogram uh, cookie cutters, just remember that they have to be metal. They can't be plastic because the plastic will melt um, with the heat of the ice melt. Uh, it's much, much hotter than chocolate. Uh, so you have to make sure that you use a metal mold and that you grease it and then you either pour it on that Teflon or that greased aluminum foil. Okay, so that is going to be our base for our first ornament. And now we are going to do our second ornament. So I have some clear ice melt here. It got a little bit too thick to pour, so I'm going to pop it back in the microwave for another 30 seconds or so, or until it gets nice and liquidy again. Um, so that's the beauty of ice melt. You just can remelt it as many times as you want. Even this piece here, if it got too cool and you took it out and you didn't need it or you ended up not liking it, you can always remelt it and put it back in the bowl and use it again. So there's no waste, which is what I absolutely love about ice melt. It just makes it so, so easy. All right. So next what we're going to do while that guy is cooling is we're going to pour our uh, next ornament. So to do this, I'm going to use just a circle cutter because I wanted to show you if you don't have an ornament cutter, you can still make beautiful medallions um, and, you know, different kind of hanging ornaments and pendants with just regular circle cutters because these are one of the most common cutters that you may have in your kitchen. So I'm going to be using this. Check on my ice melt back here. Perfect. So I can see that it's nice and liquid. Okay. I'm going to grease this as well to make sure that it's not going to stick. So just putting a little bit of that cooking spray on a paper towel. I like to use the paper towel even if you spray the cutter directly. I like to just wipe it out with the paper towel to make sure that it's all going to be coated evenly and there's not going to be drips or anything like that. Now, of course, you could just pour this just like we did with the first one to make any color of uh, circle that you wanted to, but I wanted to use an ice melt transfer sheet. So let me grab this guy. This is the ice melt transfer sheet. It is a type of icing paper that I developed with icing images to transfer onto ice melt. So you can see it's not like regular icing sheets. It's very, very thin. Um, you can almost see through it here. And when the ice melt absorbs into it, it's going to make it even more translucent and have a clear design on your ice melt. So basically, I printed this out on my edible printer. This is one of our designs that's available at seamycakes.com or the one that comes with the accessory kit, um, if you got the accessory kit for this project. And so it's just my cute little penguin here. I absolutely love him. I think he's so cute. And uh, we're going to pour the ice melt right on it. So make sure when you are pouring or using the transfer sheets, 
you always pour on the matte side. So there is a side that is matte, and then there's a side that's shiny. The shiny side is the plastic backing. Don't pour on that. Otherwise, when you take your ice mold off, you're just going to have a beautiful clear piece. Uh, you need to be able to obviously touch the paper, so we make sure that the matte side is up for this. We're going to lay it right onto our Teflon. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a mat underneath for this project because the plastic is there. So if you don't have one of these mats, uh, just pour it right on your work surface. Okay, I'm going to just pull this towards me so I can make sure he's centered. Alright, and so I just set my cutter right on top of my little penguin. Right about there. And then we'll pour our clear ice melt right on top. So I'm just going to do the same thing as with the red ornament. Just going to pour enough to cover the bottom, and it'll get uh, absorbed into the paper, and it will make it translucent. So it's going to be even more transparent. I can kind of already see how that's getting darker and almost having a yellowy tinge to it. That's actually the matte, the gold matte that's underneath it, because it's turning more and more translucent as the ice melt absorbs into the paper and making it clear. So it's going to be so awesome. This is such a good way to make really customized, really detailed designs really, really easily because um, we have lots of different pre-printed designs like this one, but if you have an edible printer, you can get the blank sheets from icingimages.com and you can print anything you want on your regular edible printer. So that gives you so much freedom if you wanted to make, you know, um, like wedding monograms, someone's name, you could write happy birthday, you could do business logos you can do photos you can do designs that would you know match in with your piece it just gives you so so many options to make whatever you want to very easily you don't have to hand paint it you don't have to do anything super detailed um, it just makes it really efficient and it makes it the same every single time which is awesome in a bakery setting because you don't have to worry about variables or anything it's just gonna make it really really streamlined so we'll let that guy cool as well. I'm going to slide it back over off to the side while they cool down, and I'll show you unmolding them in just a minute. So let me grab this. Again, no freezer or fridge for this. We just let it cool at room temperature. Okay. So we will go ahead and let those cool. Um, I have one that I already pre-made of the ornament that I uh, pre-made just before this so that we didn't have to wait for those to cool for 20 minutes. Um, so you can see that I have my ornament that just popped out here. All I did was pop it out of the cutter. I didn't do anything else to it. You can see there's a little bit of like a dull texture to the back and some bubbles that had stuck to the underneath. That's just because sometimes the mat breathes a little bit or collects bubbles. That's totally fine. And then of course that little woven texture is just from the mat. But we can get that out, which is what I'm going to do next. Sydney Catherine said she's new here. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Um, this is her first ice melt piece today. Yay! After the piece is cooled, will it be able to be placed on buttercream and put in the fridge until ready to serve? So um, the ice melt pieces you can place on buttercream. Uh, what I would do, because it's ice melt, it's going to be a lot um, more sturdy than traditional boiled sugar, so it's not going to melt as quickly. Uh, generally, your pieces will be fine as long as you spray them with the clear edible glaze, which we do at the end of all of our ice melt pieces, because that will create a barrier between the moisture and the piece. As long as it's a nice crusting buttercream and it's dried a little bit so that it's not super wet, I wouldn't really put it on like a whipped cream or anything like that that's going to be really moist. But the worst thing that um, I've had happen if it's really, really humid or moist is that the colors could bleed. Um, generally, ice melt is fine to put onto buttercream, uh, but if it's, let's say, a white buttercream cake and a black ice melt piece, sometimes the moisture can absorb a little bit. So if you're nervous about it, um, I would always say, because it's so dependent on temperature and environment, to do a little test, to make a little ice melt piece and to put it in a little, just smear out some buttercream and just see how it goes after a couple hours, um, you know, of making it. And so that way you can plan if you need to put your pieces on at the end, you know, right before it's going to be served or be delivered um, or what's going to work best for you. But generally it's fine. If you wanted to even do something like a backing on it, you could. So you can cut out with that same cutter something out of um, nodding chocolate or gum paste or fondant just to back the piece, and that would even further separate the ice melt from the buttercream, so you really wouldn't have any problem. Or, of course, you could use a little piece of parchment or something else that's food safe, as long as they know to remove that before the um, cake was going to be served. 
So you have some options there. Um, as far as the fridge, I try not to put ice melt pieces in the fridge. Of course, again, it's really dependent on environment, but as a general rule, uh, the fridge will make ice melt condensate when it comes out and it will get sticky and it can bleed uh, and melt. So what I would do is, again, you can do a test if you really, really want to try putting it in the fridge, but I would recommend putting all your ice melt decorations after the fridge comes out of the, or after the cake comes out of the fridge and once it comes back to room temperature right before it would be uh, delivered or served. So if possible, um, try that. But again, it's always best to just try it in your environment and see how it's going to go. Okay. So yeah, any questions you guys have, absolutely write them in the chat. Um, my mom Michelle is here and she's reading all of the comments. So definitely um, ask any questions that you have. Or if you're watching the replay of this, you're welcome to comment, but you're also welcome to message me. Um, that's usually a little bit faster to get um, a direct uh, answer uh, for, you know, just different questions and things as you're working. You guys are always welcome to Facebook or Instagram message or email. Okay, so as I said before, I have my ornaments here, and so I'm going to melt away those little bubbles that just stuck to the mat. You can see they're kind of like little craters. They were just stuck down on the back, and that little bit of texture. So I'm just going to take my chef's torch. So I flipped it over. When it was in the form, it was like this. Um, I took it out, and I'm going to flip it over so the bottom side that was touching the mat is up, and I'm just going to melt those away. Now, the texture is going to melt away very quickly, but these bubbles may take a few layers. So we're going to go just in light layers. Said while you're doing that, Cindy yes. remember her from Cape, um, uh, Cape Camp in 2013. Yes! Oh my gosh, that was so long ago. She says, uh, you're an inspiration. It makes me think of the picture you put on, or Dad put on this morning. Aww. <laughs> Did everybody see that picture? Yeah, that picture was, I think, 10 years ago, right? Yep. That's crazy, when I was interning in New York. There we go. Okay, so you can see um, that the ice melt has melted just a little bit here and the texture has gone away. Okay, so it's nice and glassy and transparent. So these bubbles have melted a little bit, but I'm gonna do another layer after about 15 seconds or so and just continue melting. All right. Okay, so see how I just did another light layer and I'm gonna slowly let that cool. You don't wanna do too much at once because I don't wanna warp or distort the piece any, you just wanna do it in light layers. Yeah, that was such a fun trip. I interned in New York um, about 10 years ago with Lori DeTuno and um, at Cake Alchemy in Manhattan. It was so much fun. It was such a hot summer, <laughs> but we had a really, really good time. I just posted a throwback picture of that this morning. Okay, so you see how I'm just kind of letting it cool in between. And then I'll go ahead and just melt those bubbles away. We're going to be impressioning this, so those are all going to go away um, anyway. But if you didn't want to impression it and you just wanted to leave this clear, you can see how I can just do light layers. I am going to grab my little fan just to cool this down, just to speed it up. It would cool down at room temperature, but I'm impatient, so I just use my little fan to cool it down a little bit before I pick it up. So Sydney, will theirs be, how long will it take for theirs to dry? Um, for their pieces in the mold, it's yeah. going to take about probably 10 to 15 minutes for them to cool down, um, but a little bit less if you use that fan. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pick this up. Sometimes it's best to peel the mat away from the piece. Oh, it's still a little bit warm. Okay, I'm going to use my patient skills, cool it down a little bit more. And we are going to be impress impressioning this in a second too. Um, so you don't even necessarily have to pick this up. We can just start immediately imprinting it. But uh, what we're going to use for that, once this has cooled down a little bit, is my silicone impression mat. So this is just a silicone mat. This is one of our semi impression mats, of course. But you can use any silicone impression mat. Uh, make sure that it is silicone so that it is not going to stick um, or anything like that or melt. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to heat this back up and then we're going to imprint it onto the surface of the ice malt. And um, basically we're just going to heat it the same way that we did before. So now Cindy, what cool. kind of um, impression mats can you use? You can use any silicone impression mat. It has to be silicone so that it doesn't stick or melt with the heat of the ice malt. Okay, so you can see I just picked this up and it's nice and clear now. Got rid of all those bubbles. And now we're just going to uh, kind of figure out where we want the imprint, and then we're going to imprint right onto the surface. So I'm going to heat this up again a pretty good amount. You want it to be almost melted on the surface for this to imprint properly. If you didn't heat it enough the first time and the imprint isn't very dark or deep, you can heat it again over top of that and just melt it back in, kind of like we melted those bubbles, and do it again. Make sure that's all lined up. Okay. 
And then remember that the torch only heats the surface, so the underneath is not as hot. You don't want to press too hard and risk cracking it. But I'm just going to kind of lightly press. Okay, and then we'll leave that there to cool for a minute before we peel it away, just so that it didn't stick, since our piece was pretty warm. Now you see how I left out the little cap, because we're going to be covering that in a second with some fondant, but you can do the whole thing if you wanted to, of course. All right. I'm going to turn my fan on just low over here over my little penguin ornament because I want to make sure he's cool by the time we're done decorating this guy. All right. And we're just going to slowly peel that away and look how beautiful that is. You can see it took the imprint perfectly. I am going to let that cool for just another minute or so before I pick it up just so that it doesn't um, warp or move or anything on me. But it just gives you such a perfect, beautiful impression that it really just took seconds to do. And so this gives you a whole nother set of options, not just with using the transfer sheets for designs, but actually using impression mats and getting a 3D design, which is really, really cool. So you can see, even though this is a 2D piece, technically, you can get a lot of texture and, um, you know, kind of depth to it. I have another one over here I can show you guys too that I'd use the same impression mat. Um, you guys may have seen this before. I just uh, showed this on my Cake Flicks episode. So if you want to learn how to make these cool window cookies, um, I just did a Cake Flicks episode on it. But you can see that I just imprinted, this is actually a cookie. So I filled in the uh, slot of the cookie with the ice malt after it was baked. And then I just, once it's cool, imprinted it and you get that awesome um, transparent finish. So you can see I did it on this one. Um, this one I used the same technique of the transfer sheet so you can see that it has that transfer sheet on the inside just like with the penguin and then i did the same thing on this one where you can see these are just covered in fondant so i imprinted those with an impression mat and uh, dusted them but you can see that i have that beautiful stained glass window that i can then go back and paint if i wanted to inside of the cookie so uh, you can use cookies for this as well oops i got some cookie on my mat a whole gingerbread house yeah that's a wall for a gingerbread house so um, you can do it on gingerbread for windows you can do it for um, you know medallions like this but you can also do shaker cookies that way and just so many different ideas okay so I'll go ahead and peel this guy up, hold it up a little closer so you guys can see. Alright, and look how absolutely awesome that is. You can also use the other side as the front, it kind of reflects the light really beautifully. But I'm going to go ahead and use this side today because I like how much it pops. And um, yeah, so that will be our impression. Okay. All right, so to decorate this while our little penguin friend is cooling, he's almost there, but um, just to get it kind of cooled down uh, or give it more time to cool down, we're going to decorate this guy a little bit. So first off, I want to put some fondant on the little cap there. Uh, of course, you can decorate this however you would like to, but I'm just going to use a little bit of white satinized fondant. I'm going to grab my mat here that I can cut on so that I don't cut on my silicone mat. I like to use a little bit of... Um, Crisco here, vegetable shortening, to make sure that it's nice and pliable. And I'm going to use the same cutter that we poured in to make the perfect size for our little cap on the ornament. So I'm just going to make this pliable. Okay. I'm going to grab our rolling pin here. This is so tiny, you could even probably just hand sculpt a little oval to put on the top. Mom, would you be able to grab me another cutter, since mine is indisposed of the uh, ornaments? Okay. I'm just going to roll this out. It doesn't have to be super thin, because I'm going to be imprinting this a little bit with some texture as well. But I'm just going to roll out a small little piece here. Cute. Alright. I'll go a little thinner. I'm just using white because I'm going to paint it, but of course you could do any color fondant you want. I'm just going to cut out the top half here of the fondant. You can use modeling chocolate if you prefer or something else. And then I'm going to use that as a guide to just cut a little tiny cap. So I'm going to cut off the top because we are going to be putting a hole into that in a second. And then I'm going to cut off the bottom so that it goes right up against it just like that. And then I will just use a little bit of piping gel to attach this on because it's very, very lightweight, so it's not going to take very much to get it to stick. So I'm just going to grab my piping gel. And I'm going to paint... A little bit of 
this on top. Ooh, this says not red on red. <laughs> All right. And we'll just kind of push and smooth this on. Just like that. So you see how that just kind of covers the top of it. I'm going to use um, the back of my X-Acto to put some little rivets in. Just so it has a little bit of detail to it. Because the top of ornaments, um, a lot of times on that little cap, have those little rivets in it. And I think it's super cute just to add that detail in. And then that hook at the top, we're going to pop a hole in in just a second. So I'm just leaving that as ice mulch for now. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to clean up these fondant tools here. Right, and to put the hole in the top, I'm going to do that before we um, put the decorations of the little dragees and painting and things on because I don't want to accidentally smoosh those or knock any of them off. So um, to put the little hole in the top to actually make it hang, we are going to use a uh, piece of wire. So this is just an 18 gauge uncovered wire. So it's important that there's no paper or string or anything on this. It has to just be the metal because we're going to use this to heat up to pop a hole through the top. Um, so I did it, leave it pretty long so that I don't risk um, having to hold it up close where I'm torching. So I left it pretty long, maybe about six or seven inches long. And I'm going to heat that up and pop a hole right in the top of the ornament. So I'm going to grab my torch. Okay, I have this guy ready. I'm going to heat up the end until it's nice and red hot. So it may take a second just to get it super duper duper hot. Perfect. And then I'm just going to push that through, kind of widen it up a little bit, and I'm just going to let it run all the way through rather than trying to pull it back out, because sometimes you get buildup on the end and it won't pull back out. But you can see how easy that was. It just popped a hole right in the top, and then we can use that to hang it onto our hanger later. So that just gives you a little bit of a spot, a base, or an anchor. Remember that this is very hot. Um, usually I just cut that little end off and I can use it again. Um, you can use that end a few times if you don't have too much buildup on it, but I'm just going to put this off to the side until we get our penguin out here. And then um, because our penguin I think just needs another second, I'm going to go ahead and finish this guy off with some dust and some sprinkles, some little drages. So I'm using a, a wedding gold from the Sugar Art. This is a sterling pearl or a luster dust. And I'm just going to mix a tiny bit of alcohol into my dust. And that is going to go on the cap and also go in the little lines. So I'm just using kind of a pointed brush here. And I'm not going to make this too intense. Um, so I'm only using a tiny bit of powder for the lines. Because I want them a little bit more iridescent than actual bright. And when it dries down, it will get slightly more iridescent as well. So you see how I'm just painting in these little lines here just to add kind of some pop. Of course, it looked really cool without this too, but I think that this just adds a little bit more depth into the whole piece. Ooh. Okay. And then I'll paint a little bit of that right onto the fondant, which of course will paint on beautifully just so that it all matches. And I'm going to paint a little bit onto the top as well, so it kind of looks like a metal hook. So you can see it's more of an iridescent color. Um, when the light hits it, you see it, which I think is so, so beautiful. Because you still see that depth, but it just gives you another layer of detail to catch your eye. All right. Um, because ice mulch transparent a lot of the times too, it can lose some of its detail when you're looking at it because you're all looking at it kind of all piled on each other, if that makes sense, since it's see-through. So just adding a little bit of even just dry luster dust to help it reflect really beautiful. Sydney, this is awesome. Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Uh, she used her turkey laser for the hole because she didn't have any more wire. Oh, that's so smart. I love it. <laughs> that's great. Gotta yeah, use, use whatever you have. <laughs> okay, awesome. And then I'm just going to paint a little bit of piping gel into, oh, that was my gold brush, <laughs> into the indents here, uh, or the crosshairs of each one of the um, little diamond shapes. And we'll use that to put our little dragees on. Okay, so I'm just putting that here. Again, the dragees are super lightweight, so I don't need a ton of uh, glue or anything to get them to stick. 
And I'm just going to drop these in. So these are just little pearl drages, little candies. Oh, that was a little small. And I'm just going to set these in to kind of highlight the crisscross. Um, but you can imagine all the different ways that you can decorate these. I mean, you can pipe over those. Use that as kind of a template to pipe over. You can hand paint these. If you're a hand painter, you can airbrush them. You can cover them in edible lace, I think, would be really, really beautiful. There's so many different things that you can do just with the different, um, you know, things that you have and different mediums because ice melt works really well with other mediums. So you're not just limited to using ice melt decorations. You can do whatever you have. All right. Ooh. Perfect. Okay, so there is our little drages on our ornaments here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my penguin and I'll sh um, show you how I'm gonna decorate that one before we hang them up. So I'm gonna just set this guy off to the side. Okay, we're gonna grab our penguin outright. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my um, silicone tool to test first if it is ready to come up. So I'm not going to stick my finger in it or anything just in case. Uh, you can already see how much more transparent that is compared to the paper before it. So first off, we're gonna peel the paper away because um, it's gonna come off anyway once we start to unmold it. So I'm just going to peel this off. And you can see that that just completely comes off. There's no trimming or cutting or anything, which is what I love. Um, there's some little bit of excess here that I'm just gonna brush off using a big um, brush here, just so it doesn't go everywhere. I'll just kind of do it over the plastic. Okay, sometimes it just sticks to the edge, but that excess just brushes right off. And then I'm just gonna pop this guy out. So I'm gonna flip him over and kind of pull apart the metal and he should just fall right out. Sometimes the um, ice malt can get kind of stuck up and under the metal cutter. So if it's not coming out, um, all you have to do, just keep it just like it is right now um, with the piece of ice malt on the mat. And you can just lightly torch around the outside of the metal and that will just melt it enough that it'll slip right off. Make sure though, when you grab the metal after that, that you're wearing your gloves because it is gonna be hot. But you can see that guy just popped right out. And there we go, there's our little medallion. All right, so you can see that's super, super easy. You could do those in any shape of cookie cutter. Imagine little hearts, um, you know, you could do little decorations all over it. You can, um, you know, do anything that you want to. You could do this in a snowflake shape. That would be super, super cute. Lots and lots of different options, um, you know, depending on what your project calls for. So. Basically, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop a hole in the top before I put my decorations and my sprinkles around the edge because I want to make sure that I have that in there and I don't forget and just cover it up with piping gel. Um, so I'm just going to use the other side of my wire here and heat that up. Okay. And I'm just going to put the hole right in the medallion. So you can see you don't have to have an ornament shape to do this. Um, it does look really cute because it has that kind of dedicated spot for it to hang from, but you absolutely could just do this with a little circle, okay? Super cute. Um, I might have to go through that one more time. We'll see once we go to hang it, but you can see how cute that is. All right, I'm going to paint the edges with some piping gel, and then I'm gonna use some sprinkles and some edible snow to cover over uh, the edges just to kind of pull the whole thing together. I think it just adds a really nice finished edge so I'm just going to paint some piping gel on the edges and then over the top slightly just so that you can see it from the front and it's not just stuck to the edges. So I'm going to go almost all the way around, all the way around to the top, just using a nice flat brush to paint the piping gel on. You can also use, um, I like piping gel because it's kind of thick, but you can use like glycerin. Uh, anything sticky, any kind of edible glue. Niclasage has a really good edible glue that works with this. Anything that's nice and sticky that it's going to stick to. Okay. All right. And then you can, of course, use any sprinkles that you would like. I would recommend starting with your bigger sprinkles and then getting smaller as you go. Um, so I'm just going to use a little sprinkle mix here uh, that I have that I just put together. So I'm just going to take some of the bigger pieces and just kind of place them exactly where I want and then I'll finish off the whole thing with some edible snow to fill in the crevices. So just kind of placing some of these bigger ones here just kind of strategically around. Okay. I like those little snowflakes. I'm going to use a lot of those. 
just to kind of pull in that wintry theme. All right. That is really hard to imagine right now. It is. It's so hot here right now, but hopefully maybe this will bring on some cool weather. Probably not. We still got a couple more weeks. All right, so see how I just kind of placed those uh, strategically away where I wanted them first, and then I'm going to use my edible snow to fill in any gaps. So uh, my recipe for edible snow is basically just a wafer paper. So I use icing images wafer paper. I put those in a food processor with some luster dust, some pearl dust, and some uh, edible glitter. So I use the Sugar Arts diamond dust and their pearl dust because it is all edible. And I just ground that up until it's nice and fine, and you can see it gives us a beautiful powdery, shimmery snow, so it has some spark to it as well when you look at it um, reflected in the light. So let's see, I'm going to grab a little scoop tool here. Could you repeat that? It's the wafer paper? Yes, it's wafer paper and uh, mixed with some pearl dust and some uh, diamond dust, edible glitter. Okay, so I'm just going to sprinkle some of this on just to kind of add like a frosty edge to it. If you wanted this more kind of dry, frosty without the texture, you can just paint on some luster dust, kind of almost speckle it on or dapple it on, and that would look really pretty, like the edges are starting to frost over, kind of like ice on a little icy pond or something. But I'm just going to kind of push this. I'm kind of covering up the sprinkles because I want to make sure that every gap is filled and the dust or the um, snow will fall off the sprinkles anyway because there's no glue on them. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna lift this up. And there is our finished hanging wintry see-through transfer sheet ornament. Isn't that cute? So you can see I have that little hole in the top. I can hang it right from that. And that would be super, super pretty just to have, you know, something really basic and not have to worry about having specific cutters or anything like that. So I wanted to show you both ways with a cutter and then without it so that you can... Um, you know, just kind of get different effects um, depending on what you have because it's all about using what you have, right? So you can see there's lots and lots of different options as far as customizing it to make anything that you want. Catherine's super happy she kept all her wafer paper scraps. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Save all your scraps because you can use them for stuff like that. Even if you did them in colors, it would be a really cool texture to have around the outside of kind of that fuzziness. I think black would be amazing with the diamond oh, dust. Oh, that would be super, super pretty. I think the black, yeah, with the diamond dust. Oh, and that's a great idea. Ooh, okay, we're getting all sorts of ideas now. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of dental floss for my string to hold up my ornament here. So I'm just going to thread it through and then tie this into a knot. I like to use dental floss because it is uh, food safe. Obviously, it's not edible, so make sure that nobody eats it, but it is food safe, unlike um, like fishing line or beading string, which technically isn't food safe. I'm, I'm sure it's probably non-toxic. Um, always check that, but it's personal preference as far as what you want to use. So I just tie that into knot. Cindy Kathy Moore would like to know uh, where does she go to watch it to rewatch the tutorial. Uh, to rewatch this tutorial, you can come back to my page at any time, and it will be here. But if you don't want to dig through everything after a couple days, um, sometimes it goes way, you know, way far down as I post more stuff. You can um, go on my YouTube channel. So I have all of my past Isomalt play dates listed on my YouTube channel. So I'll in the next few days I'll edit this footage and I will post it on my YouTube. So if you wanted to go back and see any of my past Playdate projects that I've done, they're all on my YouTube channel right now. I have them all on a playlist, so just go, it's under my name, Sydney Galpern. Um, go on YouTube, search Sydney Galpern, and you will see my channel. And then I have either you can just search through my videos or you can go to the playlist just to watch all of them. We have a really good amount now. I think we have at least five or six, if not more, um, from when we started. And the basic series. Yeah, and the basic series is on there as well. And there's tons of different, um, you know, tutorials for different molds we have, for different products, for different techniques. So there's lots and lots of information on there. Make sure you check that, um, you know, if you ever have questions, because a lot of the information is on there. But again, if there's anything that isn't listed on there, you can always message me. Okay, so see, I just hung that in... Uh, my little hole that I made with my wire, and then I'm going to grab my hanger here and hang it on it. Um, I'm going to switch the camera in a second so you can see the full 
uh, effect here with gravity not fighting me, but this is just a metal hanger. I got this, I think, on Amazon, um, right, is where we got these yeah, hangers? Yeah, it was a two-pack, I believe. Yeah, it was a two-pack, and these are just the perfect size for what I'm doing, and they fit, um, I believe the base is like five or six inches, so it would fit on top of a cake really nicely, and uh, so that's what I'm going to use. It's just an ornament hanger. You can find all sorts of ornament and plant, plant hangers uh, online and in stores. So that's what I'm using. I'm going to flip the camera really quick so you guys can see when I hang this up. But basically, have my hanger here so you can see a little bit better in the size that it is. And I'm just going to loop my dental floss right on top. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Oh, maybe. <laughs> here, let's set it down. I'll loop and then show you guys. I want to make sure it doesn't fall off. Alright, so I'm just going to hang this right onto the top. And there you have your hanging isomalt ornament. Isn't that awesome? So you see you're defying gravity here. Oh, I think I lost a pearl, but that's okay. A little bit of piping gel will fix that. Um, but you can see it hangs right on top. How beautiful would that be if you put it on the top of a cake or if you use these like in a separator or something and actually had them hanging? Um, or of course, just not hanging, um, putting them on a cake topper or, you know, on the side of a cake or use them as bases for little chocolates to sit on, uh, you know, or different desserts. You can do all different things with these. Um, it gives you so, so many different ideas. And um, yeah, there's just so many different ways that you can vary this. Sydney, I have a question here from Martin. He'd like yes. to know what you used to make the waves. Didn't you do some sculpting and you did a uh, mold too, right? For uh, the waves. And then you could find it on Facebook. Oh, right? yes, yes. I did a whole um, episode on different ways that you can do water techniques um, and to do the waves. I did some hand sculpting techniques and I also um, did our new wave mold. So we actually have a new uh, mold that you can pour and then shape into different waves. So um, yeah, we definitely, there's different ways to do that. And I'm also going to have an upcoming tutorial, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, which you could kind of expand upon the techniques to create waves as well. So if anybody has any questions, um, go ahead and write them in the chat, and I will be happy to answer them. Again, if you're watching this uh, later, if you have any questions, you're welcome to message me, direct message me on Facebook or Instagram or email or anything like that. Um, but if you guys have any questions in these last few minutes, leave them in the chat here. Um, I don't think we have any... No, yet. I haven't, but Margarita says she loves your fashion hair. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Are you channeling your inner Margarita hair? I definitely am, yep. <laughs> All right, so um, while we, uh, I'm just going to give you guys a minute if you have any questions or anything like that, but I also wanted to tell you guys about our next upcoming uh, live events that we're having, so I'm going to switch the camera really quick because I made a slide so I wouldn't forget anything, um, but yeah, these are our upcoming next live events, so if you enjoyed this um, and you want to do more, on August 5th, I have my next Sydney's Sweet Adventures on CakeFlix TV, so if you don't know, I have an online show that I post every two weeks on CakeFlix TV, which is an amazing online school platform that has these for free on Facebook um, so on August 5th I'm gonna be doing my next, um, next yes yeah, so if you guys have been following those it usually is every two weeks so it actually should have been next week um, but we had a little bit of a um, we're kind of pushing it forward a week because Paul and David who run Cape Flicks just got married so um, they're taking a week um, to you know do all of that and to have some time so um, we are gonna be doing it on August 5th so make sure that you tune in August 5th and uh, then you know every two weeks from there on out but we're going to be doing uh this is the first time i've shown this but i've just put a little sneak peek up there we're going to be doing a frozen theme um so it'll be christmas in august but that'll be our last christmas in july project um, which i'm super excited about you can see a sleigh and some ice and things um and then on se august 7th and 8th we are going to be doing our next Simi Isomalt Zoom workshop. So it's a little bit different than this. It's a slightly more advanced project, and it's actually an interactive Zoom workshop. So we're going to be on Zoom, on a video chat with each other, and um, I have that on my website to sign up. And we're going to be doing the stained glass isomalt butterfly. So you can see that beautiful butterfly. It's actually pretty big. It's bigger than my hand. And uh, we're going to be making that from scratch, so different uh, stained glass techniques using isomalt. Uh, we're going to be making that. So if you're interested in signing up, I only have a couple spots left for each day. So make sure you go and do that. Um, all the information is on my website, seemecakes.com, that you can sign up. And um, that one's going to be super fun. We actually did blown ice melt ornaments for my last workshop. So there are ornaments as well, but they're blown using the pump. So they're a little bit more um, advanced techniques, but it is open to any skill level. So 
it's totally fine. You can find the uh, uh, supply list online and everything like that, the kit that goes along with it. And then my next uh, See Me Ice Melt play date, so just like this, I'm going to be live streaming on Facebook. It's going to be August 21st. I made its own slide for this, so let me switch that. This is our next project. So um, our next Ice Melt play date is going to be August 21st at 2 p.m., and we're going to be making uh, all about coral. So this is going to be a whole bunch of different techniques, as you can see, and different ways to make coral. So we're going to be doing hand-sculpted coral. Coral. We're going to be doing sponge sugar coral. We're going to be doing bubbled coral uh, or like fan coral. We're also going to be pouring over ice. We're going to be doing a whole bunch of different techniques. Um, I do have another accessory kit that goes along with that. So if you'd like to follow along with all of these techniques, uh, that is listed on my website now and I will post about it probably later today um, or tomorrow. So that is super exciting. And like we were talking about before with the waves, if you wanted to elaborate on that big middle um, piece right there, you can see I kind of did it in the teal color and it looks almost like water or waves and we can. Def definitely expand upon that technique to create waves as well. So it's going to be all about different types of coral and under the sea uh, adornments and accents. Again, that's August 21st at 2 p.m., which I'm very, very excited about. That will be our next live stream. So it'll be right here um, on my Facebook page. I'll post about it and I'll uh, have it to rewatch as well. Um, again, this um, play date that we did today, you can rewatch it at any time on my Facebook page, but you can also go to my YouTube channel because I have all of them listed. I'll have this one up on there in the next few days. And yeah, let's see if anybody had any so questions. Says she's gonna, for the holidays, she's planning to hang these all over her ceiling. Oh, I love that! That would be so pretty if you did them at different levels. Now you can seal these. So remember, all of our finished ice melt pieces we seal with the clear edible glaze spray. This one's from PME, but you can use any clear edible glaze spray to lock out moisture, make sure your pieces don't get sticky or cloudy. Um, this is all edible, but I mean, if you're doing something like that, you could also spray them with just like an acrylic lacquer, like you can get at the hardware store, and that will actually lock them um, pretty much forever. You may have to respray it after, you know, a couple months or something if you really need to, but um, like that's what I did for, if you guys can see Frankenstein back here, he's sprayed in an acrylic and I made him over a year ago, I think now, and you can see he's totally fine, um, still nice and shiny. And so, um, oh yeah, I also have the piece here that I can show you guys in person. I have that nice picture, but if you would like to see it in person, this is what we're going to be making, the size of it and everything of all the different corals. So you can see we have this beautiful hand-sculpted coral, we have some uh, spun corals, we have some bubbly fan coral back here, and then we have some kind of rocky, craggly, um, poured over ice coral down here. So uh, yeah, lots of different techniques. We're also going to be imprinting that back piece of coral to get the texture in it as well. So imprinting and stretching and shaping. Um, it's kind of a variation on an ice melt sail. So you can mm -hmm. do sails like this as well for those really delicate, squishy, beautiful, um, transparent sails that are so popular right now. Um, yeah, so I'm super, super excited. Okay, uh, let's see, I have my finished pieces. So you guys can see our ornament here and you can see our ah, little penguin if I can get my hands around him here um, here's our little penguin guy you can see how pretty and transparent he is that would be beautiful as well hanging from the ornament uh, hanger and yeah there's just so many different applications for it um, so let's see if we don't have any other questions Evelyn said she got her kit she's ready for the workshop yay I'm so excited for the butterf that butterfly workshop we had such a good time doing our blown ice melt um, Zoom workshop last time, so it's going to be super, super fun. And that one's in your web store now. Yes, um, if you missed the Blown Ice Malt Ornament workshop and you would like to get the, uh, I actually made a tutorial for it now, so it's not, of course, live like it was, but we have the actual tutorial and we have the kit still available as well if you want to follow it along. And of course, you can always write me questions, so um, that is listed on my website now. If you missed the Blown Ice Malt tutorial and you want it, uh, it's listed on my website, cmecakes.com, so you'll be able to have access to that. And I'm sure we'll do the same thing with the butterfly as well. Okay, perfect. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I will see you on my next Ice Melt play date. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to send me a message or leave a comment below. And yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you have a wonderful day. Stay healthy and stay safe, everybody. And I will see you next time. Bye! <laughs>